Holy sh I made 100 videos! Hey, what's up guys? Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. And yes, uh, sorry for the kind of like over the top introduction, but I made 100 videos. And that's amazing. That's incredible. For a huge procrastinator like myself that I love to start a project and never complete it and never like finish a freaking project for a whole my entire life. This is a massive achievement. I was so stoked after uh, I think two months or one month and a half, one month and a half after reaching like publishing the video or the tutorial number 10 for the WordPress 101 series and now I'm at video number 100 and it's been amazing and I noticed actually that 100 videos in one year, actually less than one year, if we count that I started in March and now this today is February yet. It's pretty amazing. There are a lot of videos, like I publish an average of two, three videos per week, every week, and it's just like, that's incredible. I, I wasn't expecting uh, such consistency and such like commitment from myself. I, I really trust myself. I, I really have a, a huge, big consideration of my abilities and my skills. So just like, that's something, that's really something. Anyway, this video, other than celebrating these 100 videos uploaded uh, since I started, it's also a video that I want to use to answer a bunch of questions that you usually ask guys. And I already answered this question during maybe tutorials on during the Nerd Continuity Podcast, but I never did a proper video of answering the five most common questions that you guys ask. So basically these questions are pretty much uh, written by different users and I'm pretty much asked at least once a week. I say at least because sometimes in the same video I get the same questions. So I did a bit of research in the comment section of my channel and I collected the five most common questions that you guys ask. And there we go. The first question is which coding language should I start learning and everything looks so overwhelming and I don't know where to start. So this is a really common question that you guys ask and it's pretty obvious because my tutorials are uh, mostly focused on beginners. So it's normal when you're a beginner and you start approaching the web and you start approaching the coding environment, whatever you want to call it, you don't know where to start. There are too many languages, there are so many options that it's totally overwhelming. So you have to uh, kind of think about yourself and what you want to do. If you want to be a front-end developer or a back-end developer, this is the first split, this is the first uh, selection, the first choice that you can have. You can always jump between one or two, I do both, but you have to start somewhere and you cannot start by doing everything. So. If you want to do, uh, if you want to be a backend developer, you should start learning PHP, maybe the SQL language, SQL language, or like MySQL, the standard database, and you can go more into a Unix environment, to a server environment. Uh, if you want to do the front end developer, you should start, uh, of course, like starting with HTML is standard also for the backend, just please start with HTML anyway. But if you want to be more a front-end type of developer, you should start with CSS, maybe SAS, a little bit of JavaScript, and then you can extend. Of course, there are thousands of languages out there. There are too many options, can totally be overwhelming, but you have to focus and you have to start with the basics. Don't worry if every week you hear or you start hearing or you see tutorials about a completely new framework, completely new environment, you never heard about it, if you're like, you're using, you're just uh, learning JavaScript and you want to do absolutely, you want to start learning Angular JS, but it's too complicated, don't step, don't skip the steps. Just start from the basic, start with the basic languages. There are PHP, SQL, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And after that, after having a good knowledge, a good comprehensive knowledge of those basic languages, you can expand your knowledge and you can go wherever you want. You can jump back and forth from front end, back end, or whatever, do UX developer, UI, like interaction developer, whatever. 
all these kind of weird job <laughs> titles are gonna be called in the future. You can do pretty much whatever you want as far as you start from the basic. Don't try to learn from scratch without having any knowledge Laravel framework, like, like PHP Laravel. Don't do that. Don't start like from scratch, try to code an application in Node.js of Cordova or doing whatever like Objective-C is. You can do it, but it's first is too complicated. You're gonna get overwhelmed because you don't have the basics to understand that more complex logic than more complex language. And second of all, you could easily drop and not reach your purpose. So you need the basics, start from the basics, and then you keep improving yourself, keep learning. Just never stop, never feel like frustrated. It's complicated and overwhelming totally, but start with a small piece and then keep going. Second question is, when did you start coding and what was your learning process? So, um, this is another interesting question because every time I give this answer, is it's kind of weird because I started learning to code. I started coding when I was 17, now I'm 30, so 13 years ago, 13 years ago. It's a massive amount of time for the web, considering every three months everything changes. So 13 years ago you had mostly two options, or you learned PHP and you go into a Unix type of system, or you learn ASP or ASP and you go into a Windows type of system, like Windows environment. I decided to learn PHP. It was hyper complicated, I never did something like that. I started as a graphic designer, so switching from design to code was just like, oh my god, terrible, actually it was really terrible. The major issue is that 10 plus years ago, I didn't have all the resources that you guys today have. I'm not talking about my tutorials, I'm talking about everywhere, everything you can find, like YouTube, it didn't exist at YouTube 10 years ago, it was impossible to search a tutorial online uh, the only solution was buying a book, a physical book, not even an ebook, physical book, read the whole book and try to code the examples on the book. That was the most insane thing ever. Most of the books, especially I come from Italy, so a lot of books didn't come by default with a CD ROM to put the code in the computer and check it. You had to manually read the code on the book code it on your computer and check for every typo, every mistake that you made and you did. It was like, and sometimes the beautiful thing is that on those books, there were typos too. In the code, there were like mistakes left in the code and you were doing the same code, you were coping the code and it wasn't working, but it was the same of the book and it was like, that's it. You didn't have Twitter to reach out the author of the book. You didn't have even the email. Like if the author was using an email, probably it will never answer to you. And it was just insane. So it was really hard, but it started with PHP and on, on the side I was doing HTML and standard CSS. Just remember that 10 years ago, CSS was just font color, background color, and text alignment. That's it. No floating elements, no weird transition animation. It was just super basic and it was really limiting. I was, like, I was so limited in doing whatever, so I didn't have much of a choice. Probably it was for the best because I was able to be more focused on just one thing, just learning PHP and not getting overwhelmed by 10,000 different environments and frameworks but it was really hard. You, I think you can learn the same thing I learned in five years, in two months, as if today, like with the resources of today and the learning process of today. So your guys are super lucky, so you shouldn't ask much about my process because my process was kind of shitty. So like, you're, you're super lucky guys, and I envy you. The third question is, what software are you using to code? Uh, you're talking about my IDE, and how can I get your same code out of complete option? So if you notice during my tutorial while I type a function, I have the hook or like the hint of what the function could be. If I hit enter, the function get out of completed, written with inside the placeholders for whatever variable or arguments that function needs. 
Uh, that's a plugin from my code editor. My code editor is Coda by Panic. Unfortunately, it's only a uh, Mac OS application. It's just limited to that. You cannot find it on the App Store. You have to go to the Panic website. I will leave a link, of course, in the description down below. But it's, it's just amazing. It's just, I love it. I started using it two years ago and I use it uh, for my professional environment, for my hobbies, just great. I love, like, it's really solid, never crashes, and has a built-in FTP server. I can deploy code live to my GitHub repo, to my server, I can do whatever I want, and has these amazing extensions. It's a plugin that you attach to Coda, it's an official plugin from Panic, and it gives you code how to complete from WordPress or Sunder PHP or whatever. And it's just amazing. Um, if you don't have macOS, you have plenty of alternatives. You can use Sublime Text or you can use Brackets or Atom by GitHub itself. Or you can use Dreamweaver, also Dreamweaver or maybe not. D don't use that. It's the fourth question is, what software are you using for the Design Factory videos? So I started recently this new uh, playlist called the Design Factory, where I record myself designing, <laughs> designing a, a website. Everyone was blown away by the uh, graphic interface of my software and how easy it was to use that software. That software is called Sketch. It's by Bohemian Coding, and unfortunately also for that, it's a macOS only application. I'm sorry, I'm so tied to that environment that it's just kind of annoying sometimes, but it works great. I think it's just built exclusively for web designers. It's just amazing. It removes all the cluttering stuff that are just making Photoshop so heavy and so hard to use. You don't have photo retouching options, you don't have filters, you don't have all the kind of 3D weird stuff that what the hell do you need 3D in Photoshop? But anyway, uh, Sketch is just like for design and designers and it's just great. You can check it, it costs around a hundred dollars. It's not cheap of course but you buy it once, you have it forever and every update it just improves a lot. Of course also in this case if you don't have macOS you can uh, try an alternative to do web design instead of using Photoshop you should use Illustrator that is vector based and it's way more efficient on pixel managing and creating a more like pixel perfect design or you could easily also design a website with GIMP or GIMP if you want to call it like that. As you can see from the design factory it's just like simple shapes, gray color shapes, and in the next lessons, in the next videos, I'm gonna just apply pictures and fonts, something that a super simple graphic environment, a super simple graphic software can handle. So you're not tied to a specific software. The last question, question number five, is one of the most uh, funny and one of the most kind of important question of all is, can I use your source code or design file for a personal project? Yes, absolutely! Every time I share my code for free on GitHub, every time I give you the ability to download, in this case, the Sunset Theme Photoshop file to do whatever you want, you can actually do whatever you want with those files. You can reuse it for your personal project, you can implement those snippets of code or use that design file for another maybe paid application. You can create that theme or a specific code, a specific plugin or widget with my code and sell it. That code that I'm pushing on GitHub is completely free, it's under GPL uh, license so you can use it as much as you want, personal project, commercial project, it doesn't matter, it's just for free for everyone to use. It's the web. My code is not like groundbreaking, like something that you never saw before. It's really easy to replicate and I'm doing all these videos so everyone can take a look at my source code. So you guys are totally free to use it as much as you want for whatever project you want. So it's pretty much it for today's videos. It was a super quick video and it had so much fun going through all your questions inside my massively long uh, comment section in my channel. I'm just so blown away about your positive feedback. As usual, if you want, if it's the first time you're seeing this video on my channel, 
Hello, welcome to this amazing adventure. You can subscribe and you can check all the videos that I did to learn how to code, to learn WordPress, to learn how to design and to improve your developer's life if it's something that you want to improve. Like, it's actually really sad, but yeah. Let's have fun together. And of course, if you're really kind enough, you can check this link here that is gonna appear, the support me link in my website where you can check all the different ways to support me, support this channel and help me to do better video and better tutorial for you. So thank you again guys for checking this video and as usual until the next lesson, happy coding! 100 video!